Hello and welcome to the program. So an advisor to Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky and the former finance minister of Ukraine, Alexander Daniluk, has said that the Minsk format of negotiations on the peaceful settlement of the situation in Ukraine uh, should be kept. So what strategy of the reintegration of Donbass should Ukraine's new president follow? Now I'm pleased to say to discuss this and a lot more, we're joined in the studio today by Maria Zolkina. She's a political analyst at the Democracy Initiatives Foundation. Hello, thank you so much for coming Hello, to our studio. thank you for the invitation, thank you. So we always hear, I mean, certainly over the past couple of years, that the Minsk agreements have been stalling, mainly because of uh, Russia and its reluctance to uh, follow it, and certainly for its representatives in the occupied territories to follow it as well. So what changes do you think um, you, will we see on the Ukrainian side? Have we seen any mm -hmm. particular names who might be involved in the future Minsk agreements and what uh, advantages or disadvantages uh, could that have in, in your opinion? So first of all, the Minsk format uh, not only should be, but I think will be kept because it has penetrated into all international platforms uh, so deeply that it is just a crazy idea to uh, to say that we will not follow the Minsk format or the Minsk agreements nowadays just because we want something new. Uh, it will be not understood by the international community. So I think that the team of the new president will really follow the previously developed uh, scheme of uh, Minsk agreements and Minsk format. But the main question is that they still uh, is that they uh, haven't uh, yet represented mm. not only the team responsible for Donbass related issues among the team of the president, not, nor uh, um, at the same time they also didn't, ha didn't uh, present uh, any kind of the program of reintegration because it's a little bit different tracks. Mm. So on the one hand, we have uh, operative and day-to-day -day, uh, work, which means that we have to coexist with uh, currently occupied territories. And this is what Minsk um, uh, contact group is busy mm. with. But on the other hand, uh, Ukraine as a state still has to develop a coherent, not fragmented, but uh, complex uh, public policy towards occupied territories. How do we co exist, coexist with mm. them? What can we and what should we do to the ordinary people still living there? Mm. And these are still the open questions. Uh, about, about the uh, Regarding the people, actually, uh, I think that uh, expert, non-governmental uh, community is full of of, uh, n full of not, of course, um, tens, but there are very uh, reliable and authoritative experts, really good in uh, all the issues related to controlled and non-controlled areas of mm. Donbas, including both public policy on those territories and operative issues. So I think that it would be a good decision for the new president, at least to involve these people in some kind of the working process, yeah. expert process for preparation for being like stronger in the Minsk I think format. that's a really interesting point that you make actually because often we just see that politicians are involved in these negotiations but certainly in Ukraine there are renowned human rights experts, uh, experts on uh, law, on um, sort of not reintegration of displaced and IDPs, people. IDPs, reintegration, yeah. yes. And, and all that sort of thing. But um, I mean what sort of um, progress should Ukraine expect? Because, uh, you know, Russia has continually violated the Minsk agreement. So what would change now specifically, even with a new team? So the, the problem of the previous authorities was that they have relied too much on the political progress in negotiations with Russia. Mm. And at the same time, they made a pause uh, regarding the domestic policy towards those issues which Ukraine is responsible for when it comes to Donbass. Mm. So I mean those IDPs, mm. I mean people living in the frontline areas but from Ukrainian con Ukraine controlled side. Mm. Uh, I mean uh, some kind of communication and information policy towards people on the occupied territories. And I think that the strategy of Ukraine should be that until we have Russia, uh, Russia's readiness mm. towards acceptable for us comp compromises, until that time we have to make what we can do regarding um, uh, 
reintegration perspective to make it as smooth in the future as possible. And you what, think a lot more needs to be done in, yes. in this regard, certainly. Of course, in this regard, what we have to do, we have to change uh, the system of control and verification of internally displaced pre person. Mm. First of all, we should at least to start uh, divide uh, IDPs from the uh, retired person mm. uh, and to change this, uh, to, to liquidate this uh, actually not fair link uh, of the people's right to have their pension mm. with their uh, with their obligatory, uh, uh, with their obligation to have, to hold their IDPs uh, card. Oh, so uh, I see. Yes, okay. at least yeah. to start analyze how to do uh, what Ukraine have to do do not to make those people um, in unfair way uh, just blocked uh, from uh, blocked in their occupied territories and it, it's our actually constitutional obligation mm. regarding those people and we have at least to analyze this the, how, how to do that in the current the, uh, circumstances uh, another another issue is that uh, the crossing points which have to be in my opinion which have to be transformed into some kind of administrative public policy and transport and transport and uh, information hubs mm. uh, so what i mean so the state cannot provide people with administrative service on the occupied territories. It yeah, means that we have to develop uh, lo logistic and uh, in, in administrative terms as well as as uh, as, uh, like as broad infrastructure of administrative services on the side of Ukraine mm. as we can in the uh, some um, um, uh, towns or villages which are close to the yeah. division line so people cross the line and they receive as much service as they as they need administrative service mm. i mean so passports uh, any kinds of the documents a anything uh, court, and from what courts, you know this is still quite difficult even though the war has been going on for 5 years and so. All these uh, all these services they are provided by local administrations mm. or local uh, some executive bodies which were not um, um, presumed to to uh, accept as much people from mm. the occupied territories as, uh, as as they have to work with now. So it's just too much demand too, on too them. Too much amount yeah. of people, not well developed infrastructure for that. So we need more skilled people. We need good infrastructure. We need transport communication communication between division line settlements and the other parts of Donetsk and Lugansk region. So these are very simple. So there are at the same time, there are very important uh, issues for the local population on the Ukrainian side. Mm. So people have still problems with the uh, so some kind of compensations from the state because uh, People have lost their uh, real estate, for instance, mm. and state didn't present its position. So you have yeah. lost your building, uh, or you were, or you, or you were personally injured, for yeah. instance. Yes. So you do not receive any kind of the financial treatment or financial aid on the side of the state. Uh, but, but I think before un until russia <laughs> will be made to uh, reimburse something to mm. ukrainian state ukraine still has to help its own people mm. uh, because for instance the military men they have the right for some kind of the financial aid if they are uh, injured for instance yeah. or if they are killed so their families receives why local civil population doesn't have the same rights in the time of the war living at the division line yeah so uh, there is also the problem with the uh, with the usage of local population property by uh, different military um, uh, divisions. But um, it, I mean, there, could there be an argument against that, saying, well, the military personnel who are on the front line are the responsibility of the military, but if uh, the Russian hybrid forces are launching uh, rockets. Uh, people's houses in the government-controlled parts of Ukraine. Uh, that's not the fault of the Ukrainian state, that, so to speak. Uh, that's the argument of Ukrainian state now. Mm. But uh, as as a result, we receive this. We face the situation when the conflict is a long-term one. Mm. So nobody has a hope that it will be ended tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So it means that people are alone with their financial problems. 
in the division line. So I have to say that there, there, there should be some window of opportunity to find some kind of financial support for those people who have really lost something uh, um, when we speak about some property or yeah. when we speak about even some uh, ha do, even do you house. think that this is actually possible? Because um, if you can possible. imagine there's so many IDPs, I think there's over 1.2 million IDPs, if I'm not mistaken. It, it, it's formally. Yeah, formally. There's probably a, a lot more who are not registered and, and, and that sort of thing. So that's a huge financial burden of the state and really it's a battle of hearts and minds isn't it? of course it's a huge amount of uh, money but i think that uh, there there is the the task for the state to try to find some new solutions for the problems which we didn't face before mm. B more of that uh, moreover we have uh, great support from international community and we have support from the united nations organization and i think that there should be some some opportunities to find some international money to help people who have really lost something. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's an obligation. It's the key, actually, to the people's mind in the, at the division line. Because if they live in the time of war and they, and they, and they suffer from the after effects of the war and they do not see any uh, real steps of the state to help them, mm. it means that people will not trust these state structures. And that's mm. the problem. But does the, does the state from what you've seen actually have an effective strategy to reach out into the occupied territories. It must be incredibly difficult. I mean, I can't even think of a way how that's possible. Say you have someone who's living in Donetsk mm -hmm. and you want them to be able to learn about what they can get in Ukraine. You're trying to sort of win them over. How do you get the message across? I mean, of course, sort of like our channel, UATV, it broadcasts in the occupied uh, territories. So, I mean, media is one particular way, but apart from that, of course, signals get blocked. Uh, information doesn't get through, um, that sort of thing. Yes, that's true. And that only increases the importance and significance of the statement that we have to do what we can do in mm. this uh, particular uh, conditions and circumstances. Uh, if, if people do not face uh, obstacles or challenges when they want to, to get Ukrainian passport, for instance, yeah. after crossing the division line, it means that they will be not as hostile to Ukrainian state as Russian propaganda uh, tried to make them yeah. uh, through separatist channels or Russian TV channels. If people have, to, if people have the simple way uh, to find any needed information regarding uh, like coexistence uh, of uh, occupied and non-occupied uh, uh, territories, uh, it means also that they will trust more the state which which aims to reintegrate those territories. Yeah. Another issue is that direct communication, which is uh, uh, not evaluated on the needed level by, by our authorities, uh, direct communication between people living in uh, non-controlled and controlled areas. Mm. So um, as uh, our um, one of our public opinion polls in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, or beginning of the 18, uh, showed uh, every second person in the controlled part of Lugansk and Donetsk region have relatives, friends, or some kind of acquaintances um, um, at the, uh, the other side. on the yeah. other side. Yes, and absolute majority of these people, they uh, they they still keep the communication uh, mm. with, with these people. So it means that. As much people living here on Ukrainian side trust uh, uh, Ukrainian state and see normal steps towards organization of their life mm. by Ukrainian states there, the more they will be uh, able to transform the, the mind of the people yeah, living there. Because you trust your, the, your yes, friends and yes, your family because, and that sort of thing. Because personal trust is much higher than trust to any governmental or non-governmental bodies as any public opinion poll shows, demonstrates. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we only have a few minutes left, but I want to ask you about uh, Mr. Medvedchuk, who's been representing um, at uh, these negotiations. Do you think that his, the reports of his uh, mm -hmm. removal from these talks, do you think it will have much of a difference or not really? I think that necessity of uh, of uh, preserving uh, Mr. Medvedchuk in the Minsk uh, contact group is not as 
as obvious or as needed as it was presented several years ago. Mm. The only one issue he was dealing with is that uh, release of the people who were I illegally arrested mm. or imprisoned in Russia or in Lugansk, uh, so-called um, uh, LPR or DPR. But nowadays, I think it will not uh, influence uh, the the effect the effectiveness of Ukrainian representation in Minsk format just because uh, we do not have any progress over these years besides of only one huge release of uh, arrested people uh, it means that Viktor, Viktor Medvedchuk did use, like the politically did, uh, he used politically uh, this format, mm. but but he didn't actually bring uh, real progress, even in that area he was responsible for. Yeah. Uh, we have about one minute left, I believe. So um, I have one final question. Do you think that the Minsk agreements should also incorporate Crimea as well as Donbass? I mean, this has been quite a criticism of the agreements that, that actually... Donbass and Crimea should be packed together as one agreement. Do you, do you think that um, would be a good step or not? I think it might be combined in Normandy 4, but yeah. not in the Minsk format, because Minsk format is an operative format, mm. which actually it, uh, uh, looks for the ways, search for the ways how to implement what was adopted on a more strategic level. Mm. So that's why I think that Crimea should be combined, but, uh, but, but, but not like 100 percent because it's a different track and different uh, time perspective of reintegration. Okay, Ms. Olkman, thank you so much for thank coming you. into the studio. It's been a pleasure to have you. It's Thanks. been uh, very interesting. Thank you very much. That was Maria Zolkina, a political analyst at the Democracy Initiatives Foundation. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more here on UATV.